Hey, friendo, Steve here. Hey, Lars. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Available wherever podcasts can be found, of course, taped live on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Stephen Larson, where you can find us tomorrow for our Dab E Summer Slam live watch along with the friendos. Wrestling's a lot of fun, Larson, but it's even more fun when? When? When it's on a Saturday. No, when you're watching it with friends. Oh, that's what you're trying to get at. <laughs> Survey says. <laughs> oh, <Jose. laughs> <laughs> oh man um so yeah tomorrow we're doing our summer slam watch along that should be fun uh right now available right now is our preliminary predictions video uh up at friendo club tv big red's gonna be on the line on uh tomorrow summer slam uh so that should be what it, it's not back there man it's back it's here. gonna go back there it's oh gonna you, go well, back you're pointing there. at a at a sid doll right now man well it's, it's our, our, our horse pictures right back here behind it's me right too. here though i got it right here i know but it's going right back there okay anyways good luck with that uh so those predictions are available right now friendo club tv you can check that out but of course our predictions we're gonna be doing those our picks live as it happens as the action's going down so uh, yep. I'm I'm expecting a lot of twists and turns at SummerSlam this year, man. I yeah. think there's some weird shit that's going to happen. Yeah, maybe. I think we're going to get maybe. some uh, Johnny Gargano jumping from Impact Wrestling Matt Chat question. Yeah, to to, uh, to SummerSlam. Don't do main roster, yeah. or maybe he'd go back to NXT because mm. we might be seeing some changes coming Ooh, up here. Transition. Yeah, look at that. So now the Triple H is heading up WB Creative. Could we see? NXT 2.0 kind of revert back to NXT 1.0. Ooh. In the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter, Dave Meltzer reported, quote, in NXT, the belief was that the product will revert back somewhat to Levesque's previous vision of it. The belief was that while they will continue to heavily recruit top-tier athletes to process Levesque has been a key player in over the past year, that they would be more open to use more experienced wrestling talent as well, and that going forward, the door would be open to better wrestlers who weren't as big or as good looking as McMahon wanted on the roster. Yeah, pretty people. God damn it. Um, yeah, so uh, that's not shocking at all. No. Um, it does feel, even just from like that, that first episode of Raw, that he is looking to put his stamp on things. Mm -hmm. He is not, you know, I know um, in one of the, the, the several Fightful Select articles, uh, out there, um, the, the, there is a, a belief that he may, in order to sort of out of respect for Vince McMahon, keep things sort of going to a degree as they were, not like shift too hard. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that's true. <laughs> I don't think, I, I think, I think, no, I think that, you know, whoever said that actually did say it. I don't think Fightful Sex is making anything up. Obviously, of course. yeah. But, it seems pretty clear that Triple H understands the issues with the product as it stands under or as it did stand under Vince McMahon. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he wants to change that. And I think he's he felt very passionately that people who were uh, wrestlers on the independent scene and they came up and they built their own brand. Those are people who are uh, uh, valuable, who, you know, uh, and that's what he was doing in NXT. And then they was like, no. We're gonna we're gonna bring people in from from you know the the world of sports, which they were still doing in the first place. Yeah. yeah. Um, but instead of exclusively doing that, yeah, it seems it seems perfectly within reason that Triple H would go back to the philosophy under which that initial NXT brand was uh, oh, was established. Sure. Um, sure. That makes total sense. Now, um, does that mean there's gonna be an aesthetic change to NXT? I don't see why not. I don't think it'd go back to the to the black and gold because that's a step backwards. But uh, one of the things about NXT these days, it is just a god ugly show. It is it's color vomit everywhere. It, it is. is. It's too much. It, yeah. I mean, here, look. I like color. I like vivid color. Yeah, sure. But if it's just so haphazard in its execution, yeah, it's just it's it's hard on the eyes. Yeah. And while uh, NXT black and gold. I have a fondness for that period of NXT because I thought they put on great wrestling shows for the most part. Um, uh, but it, it was a little too drab, minimalist. 
Yeah, it was okay. both kind of in yeah. terms of the color palette, and then it was like very metal. Yeah, like with the actual graphics, even when they had like chain link f- chain link fence mm-hmm. against the barricades when they had the glass up and they brought crowds back. Um, there's got to be a, a happy medium that exists yeah, where sure. they can brighten up the show a little bit, mm-hmm. but not have it like overexposed. You know, like you take a picture with your f-stop uh, too open and it's like yeah. glaringly bright. You don't want that either. You <laughs> yeah, know, because that's what it is now. When you can see the in the early days of 2.0, when you could see like the roof. Mm-hmm. Of a performance center and the back walls where no one was, I was like, mm-hmm. "This is too bright. Yeah, there's right. too much light in this space." It, dude, it kills. You know, I've got, I've got that what 75 inch screen TV out in my living room, but it's got a refresh rate of like 60 or something. You know, yeah. it's not great. And so as soon as NXT 2.0 comes on, especially when I watch it through the streaming service, which just compressed all the hell, anyways. Oh yeah. It's a, it's a mess. It's just artifacting all over the place. Now, I might need... Yeah, exactly. Now, maybe I should just plunk down for a decent you know TV, but with like a better refresh rate. But um, but yeah, I could, I could see... You know, if there's going to be sort of a new era to NXT, I could see Triple H bringing back some of the things, not aesthetically, but some of the things that people really loved about NXTs. Number one, actual takeovers. You know? Mm-hmm. They don't do a lot of those anymore. They do like themed episodes. Um, and, uh, and on top of that, you know, when people would show up in the crowd, oh, whoa, you know, they signed whatever indie talent you can think of that might Mm -hmm. be, you know, like Kevin Blackwood. Oh, he's in the crowd. Now he's going to be showing up. Um, I know things are different now because AEW sort of took that thing that they were doing, but I think you can bring back some tropes that people really appreciated and still move the product forward. Um, and I don't think it's unreasonable to think that, Hey, this is a new era of NXT um, with Triple H, you know, under, uh, you know, in control and with the new philosophy in terms of bringing people in and, and signify that through a visual change the same they, way they did with NXT 2.0. And no, I don't think mm-hmm. you should go back to just like, you know, <laughs> it was like 70% just like negative space on the screen and then yeah. dashes of gold <laughs> and then wrestling I happening. I, I I'm not I'm not really I by the end, I sort of grew tired of that as well. Um, but that being said, I think that they could bring in some sort of designer to, to, you know, like you said, a happy medium, something that's maybe on par, like sort of an indie version of main roster, perhaps that yeah. isn't a Jackson Pollock ripoff just gone completely wrong. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a bit much. And, and, uh, you know, I think the, the, the hallmark of NXT one point of the thing more than anything, people remember it fondly for is just really good wrestling. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. I miss the days when takeovers good would happen. Stories too, and good stories. The way I mean, they told stories. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, like like Gargano Champa. You know, like Boom. the the initial story was basically Shakespeare in, in the world of pro wrestling. Right. Yeah. Um. And we don't get that. We don't get that anywhere now. Right. Yeah. Um. And granted, that wasn't something that happened all the time in NXT. But that's, you know, that's every, if every story was really really good. I don't know. You, you be a bit overwhelming, or mm-hmm. is that involved? I should say. Mm-hmm. I want every story to be good, but not every story has to be that involved. Mm-hmm. Um, I like variety in my stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, good stories, good variety. Not everything has to be like a, 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 a like a like a, the Iliad or something like yeah, that. Right. You know, yeah. um, just give me good stuff. Yeah. Anyways, but yeah, bring back the takeovers. Bring back the five star matches. I mean, when they have these special events, usually the matches are pretty good because they still have time to prepare and practice and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. Um, but yeah, there's a thrill involved with with watching one of these takeovers and having, uh, you know, somebody, you know, for example, Adam Cole hop the barricade and attack the champion at the time yeah, with Drew right. McIntyre. You yeah. know, when when we saw Drew at a WCPW show mm-hmm. in the afternoon, and then he shows up at Takeover that evening. It's pretty cool. It's wild. Yeah, it's neat. Um, and especially now, if if you know, there's been a lot of chatter. We talked about this recently of people who used to be in WB going elsewhere and thinking and talking about, and people on the internet just kind of talked about in general who has who ha- that has left WB uh, in the past would be inclined to come back now that Triple H is in charge, or if Triple H was in charge, would they have left at all? Mm-hmm. And if the idea is like we'll see a modest return to the philosophy of NXT 1.0, that would be potentially enough for indie talent, should they actually be scouting them, to bring them in 
instead of them maybe going to AEW, mm-hmm. um, because the vibe, mm-hmm. maybe not the 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 you know the the aesthetics of it, but the vibe of NXT is back. Well, there's and it also, seemed like an exciting place to wrestle. On top of that, dude, there's just there's opportunity there where AEW those opportunities are getting they're drying up. They are drying up. I mean, you look at the, even with people injured, they have a hard time fitting people in. I mean, you got uh, uh, Ethan Page on Twitter. You see this? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. he's got a match tonight against Leon Ruffin, which, by the way, it's great to see him on TV anytime. Uh, but, uh, you know, and Page is like, hey, maybe I can do this more than once every five weeks. Yep. Thanks, yep. AEW. Um, yep. And I agree. It was sort of like on the in the indie sense. It was like, oh, cool. All ego Ethan Page is showing up. You know, he did some great work in Impact. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and then he comes over to AEW. It's like, oh, cool. And then, like, you know, he's putting a tag team, but they're having Lambert talk all the time. And then he's just sort of gone, kind of, because Sky is out. Yeah. Who, who it didn't make a whole lot of sense from the get go why he was put the tag team and then they got Lambert with him. Yeah. When both. Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky are really good talkers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Didn't make a whole lot of sense. So, I mean. Sense. But, like, even more recently, like, with Athena mm-hmm. showing up. She's been involved in the Jade story, obviously, mm-hmm. but it hasn't been necessarily the debut and story, first story as impactful as you would think for bringing in a, a former NXT champion. You it's know? it's interesting, just big picture. And I'm not honestly. I think AEW still provides a lot of value for a certain thing, mm-hmm. but it ain't. It, there, there's two things. Number one, it it didn't turn out to be the end all be all to you know the problems with Vince McMahon, you know. Uh, and and number two, now that Triple H is in charge, AEW sort of sprang up because. Triple H wasn't in charge. You know what I mean? It's like there was a massive pool of indie talent out there, and W and Triple H wanted them all because he's like, man, these guys are really killing out there. I want to put them on a bigger stage. But the problem was Vince McMahon. So it's like, okay, well, Triple H can't do what he wants to do, and and which is just make good stories on a bigger stage. So AEW mm-hmm. came around, became basically NXT, good stories, great wrestling for uh for for main roster. And I know I've cracked this joke before. I'm not going to do it here. But the honeymoon period for AEW is over. Like I said, they do a lot of good stuff. But there are also mm-hmm. some big problems over there. Mm-hmm. Number one with their women's division. Mm-hmm. It's 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 almost offensive at this point with how they treat their women's division. It really is. Um, so it ain't the end-all be-all. And I don't know that you know Triple H being in charge is going to be the end-all be-all. But we're going to get a good taste of what we you know, we what we've all been wanting to see that curiosity of what's Triple H gonna mm-hmm. bring. Now, I wonder going back to the NXT question, is it do you think I mean now that he's got Ron SmackDown, right? He, those are his. Mm-hmm. Is he going to endeavor to make NXT what it was before the indie radio or whatever he called it, indie rock? Well, and well, I would, on par with those two other brands. That's the big question. So I would uh, here's the thing. It depends if his philosophy is NXT will be third brand or I still want NXT as developmental property. Um, I think that what he'll want from NXT might be similar regardless, but if he's pushing more towards third brand, then we're going to get a lot more major indie names coming in. Um, and then I think the overall focused on people who have experience and who have established brands, whether they're huge uh, in the independent ranks or not, I think that'll be the emphasis. If they want it, if he still wants it to be a primarily, not exclusively, primarily a developmental brand, then I think they might be a bit more choosy in terms of the independent wrestlers they bring in, as well as as you know, like the former collegiate athletes or maybe even professional athletes, um, and train them. Um, uh, it. it I think regardless of the path, he's going to tailor NXT for the type of wrestlers that he wants to bring up to the main roster of the future. I mean, that's the whole idea why Vince wanted to change to begin with because he didn't feel like Triple H was, or NXT as it existed, were providing the wrestlers that he wanted on the main roster. And if Triple H is leading uh, scouting as head of talent relations and leading creative, I mean, he has both the vision and the opportunity to bring in exactly who he wants yeah. to fulfill whatever uh, purpose he sees 
NXT and main roster having going forward. I do kind of wonder, given that there are certain people who really stand out in NXT, I'm thinking, uh, uh, obviously, Braun Breaker is a unique personality, but Julius Creed, big dude, really taken to it fast. I wonder if Triple H, having seen certain success in that mm-hmm. philosophy, bringing in the athletes, the, uh, the, the athletes, as opposed to strictly independent wrestlers, if he's going to keep an open mind about that. I mean, we had tryouts, you know, we're, we're going to talk yep. about that here in a sec. Um, but I wonder if if it's going to be more of a middle ground or if he's going to, you know, revert back to, man, this guy's really busted his ass on the indie ranks. I really like his vibe. I'm going to bring him in. Um, that remains to be seen. But honestly, man, I think if, if a year from now we're going to be in a position where we were back in, what, 2015, 2016, where a Kevin Owens call up is just awesome. Where uh, uh, a Sami Zayn call up is pretty damn cool. Mm-hmm. When you have that kind of stuff, where there's a lot of continuity between brands, between NXT and main roster, and they mean something, you know, somebody comes up with the NXT titles. Well, that'd be awesome if Mandy Rose, as NXT Women's Champion, mm-hmm. were to show up at SummerSlam or on the Raw after SummerSlam or SmackDown after SummerSlam and establish, hey, this title's on par with you, Bianca, or with you, Liv Morgan. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that could be a, a big statement right there. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if he's able to finally realize his vision for what those call-ups feel like, what they mean, yeah. how they can yep. pop a crowd, and how can they can introduce main roster audiences to a new star that makes them feel like a star. I always said every call-up should be like that Kevin Owens one. Every debut or call-up should feel like Chris Jericho back in 99. Yeah. You know, yeah. At least aim for that. At least try to do that because that's sort of the standard. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, let's take a quick break here to get a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Hey, Larson. Yeah. Quiz time. Quiz time. That's right, it's quiz time. What are things that you do to take care of your brain? Quiz time? You're mm-hmm. doing quiz time? That's my gimmick. You're answer, stealing my gimmick now? Answer the question, Larson. Oh, it's quiz time. You're on the clock. Here, I'll, I'll help you out. I'll go first. This is what I do to take care of my brain. I take naps. Lots of naps. Naps are good for my brain. Well, that's true, Steve. There are a lot of things you can do to support your brain health, including taking naps. That's right. You see, how we care for our brains can affect how we experience life, so it's important to take the time and care necessary to keep your brain and your mind healthy. So you could help keep your brain healthy by learning a new language, or if you're like Steve, taking a nap, or you could try BetterHelp Online Therapy. There was a period in my life where I was dealing with severe anxiety and I had to look for some help. So I've been through the process of trying to find a therapist and I know how difficult it can be to find the right person to talk to. But BetterHelp Online Therapy makes that process much more convenient by offering video, phone, and even live chat therapy sessions. BetterHelp can get you matched up with a therapist in less than 48 hours, and it's much more affordable than in-person therapy. And right now, Going In Raw listeners can get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash raw. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash raw. And now let's get a word from our sponsor by Optimizers. Okay, Steve, no more quiz time. You canceled quiz time. Quiz time is over. Oh, no. So just tell me why magnesium is so important, if you could, please. Come on, just tell me. Why is magnesium so important? Because magnesium is involved in 80% of our body's metabolic reactions, yet 75% of us don't get enough. And when you don't get enough magnesium, you basically turn into Larson. You suffer from poor sleep, low energy, and higher stress levels. Well, you didn't really have to go there. It was rude. Sorry. But yes, I did suffer from poor sleep and low energy and high stress, but... But I've been taken by Optimizer's Magnesium Breakthrough, and I've noticed that my sleep has been better. My stress levels gone down on my energy, gone up. And even if you've tried Magnesium Breakthrough before, you should try this new formula because it now includes cofactors like B6 and manganese to help with magnesium absorption. That may, means it's more effective. All you got to do is take two capsules before bed, and you'll be astonished with how much better you sleep and how your mood and energy levels are improved the following day. For an exclusive offer for Going In Raw listeners, go to magbreakthrough.com slash raw and use code raw during checkout to save 10% and get free shipping. Again, go to magbreakthrough.com slash raw and use code raw during checkout to save 10% and get free shipping. 
And before we get back to our show, let's get a word in from our sponsor, Liquid IV. Now, we've talked about it plenty here on the show. Lars and I like to get together every week to play some basketball, but we both come to the realization that, oh boy, it is so easy to get dehydrated, especially during these hot summer months. Yeah, and it's been brutally hot. And as I'm sure you know, Steve, when we play basketball, I'm out there working hard on defense and I'm sweating a lot. And the last thing I want to deal with when I'm out there trying to ball you up is dehydration because it ruins my day on the courts and my day as a whole. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. Even if I beat you every single week, uh, at the end of the day, when I beat you and I get home, I got a big dehydration headache if I don't properly hydrate and I'm useless the rest of the day. Vittoria early in the day, but then failure the rest of the day because I'm dehydrated. Yeah, uh, my wife actually introduced me to Liquid IV several months ago to keep herself hydrated while running, and I've started using it during and then after our weekly basketball games, and I've noticed a pretty massive difference. I don't feel like I get as run down while we're playing, and I don't feel as sore afterwards. So now, Liquid IV has become part of my routine, and not only when we play basketball, but anytime I'm exercising or I'm going to be out in the sun. Heck, we even brought some Liquid IV with us on a recent vacation to keep us hydrated, while we were lounging by the pool. Liquid IV is also super easy to use. I just put one stick of it in 16 ounces of water and I'm good to go. Liquid IV hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone. And you got your choice of 10 refreshing flavors like Concord grape, lemon lime, pina colada, and my favorite tropical punch. I've been really drinking the lemon ginger of late. It's really good stuff. So grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code RAW at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code RAW at liquidiv.com. Definitely. Let's talk about this. This is interesting. So, uh, Fightful interviewed WWE U.S. champion Bobby Lashley in advance of this weekend SummerSlam. In that interview, Lashley revealed that he had uh, conversations for a potential fight with Mike Tyson. So Lashley stated that he was, quote, approached by a bare-knuckle boxing company rep to fight Tyson, and Madison Square Garden was pitched as the venue for the event. And in that same interview, uh, Lashley said he asked Vince about taking a fight in UFC, but Vince said, no, not happening, apparently. It might make you too big of a star. <laughs> no good. Yeah, oh, um, yeah, that would be interesting to see Bobby Lashley in the ring with Mike Tyson in a bare knuckle boxing match. That sounds that sounds terrifying. <laughs> like, have you seen? I know you have any of those little videos of Tyson even now. Oh yeah, doing his yeah. boxing. <laughs> he is terrifyingly fast. Oh, he's still he's still ridiculously quick. I know, I know. It's crazy. Um, yeah, dude. I don't man bare knuckle boxing. I've seen that a little bit more. That like I was on in my Instagram feed. I'll see that. I'm yeah, like, Why yeah, is yeah. this on my Instagram feed? I follow comic book artists, um, but uh, but I always click on it, <laughs> and then it just and then that's all you get. You I click know. on so, one video, and that's everything. Then the same thing that happened with me in basketball tutorials. I looked at one, and now that's all I get. <laughs> now you get traveling or no videos. <laughs> exactly, and it's always traveling. It's always traveling. They always lift up their pivot foot. That's a travel. Yeah, it is. Anyways, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I've seen some of that bare knuckle boxing stuff. It looks horrible. <laughs> I, I love I love Bobby Lashley too much. I'm going to turn him down. No, Bobby, you can't do it because that's scary. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, a uh, UFC fight, that'd be interesting because you have Lashley, he was established name of the pro wrestling world, plus uh, he had a pretty decent uh, MMA record for himself when he was doing that on a regular basis. If memory yeah. serves. Yeah, no, I, I believe he did. I'm not enough of a aficionado to know if his record in, um, well, what, what was, I forget. The Strike, Strike Force? Force? Strike Force. Is that what it was? If what that would translate to if he actually took on UFC. Yeah, 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 yeah. Plus, he's a little bit on the older side. Um, but, you know, if it's something the dude really wants to do, you know, fucking let him do it. You know, the worst that happens is. Uh, you know, he loses. He's not going to lose as bad as CM Punk loss. And look at, no. you know, he's doing pretty no. fine for himself. No, no, <laughs> no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, I don't know. Let him do. I can understand though. He Lashley's a big deal, and you don't you don't want him to get hurt and then yeah, not be able to wrestle anymore. If that's the concern, who knows? Oh, was it Bellator? It was Bellator. All right, somebody says Bellator here. I don't know. I don't pay attention to that. I stuff. can't remember either. 
Anyways, uh, so earlier, of course, oh, he, we were... he did. Well, he did some stuff in Strike Force. Oh, did he? Okay. Twenty eleven. We know uh, we're talking Bellator about Bellator twenty fourteen to twenty twenty. We know what we're talking about. Damn it! God damn it! There was a year in Strike Force, though. We didn't oh, imagine perfect. that, at least. Okay, good. Uh, anyway, remember Elite XC? I do. <laughs> they had a Kimbo slice. They did. They yeah. did. He yeah. made somebody's ear, uh, ear explode. He did. Yeah. Yeah, I'll never forget those Kimbo Slice backyard videos were amazing. Oh, wow. That dude mm-hmm. just destroying people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyways, so we talked earlier about tryouts and NXT and developmental. Well, uh, could we see possibly a former NBA All-Star joining Logan Paul and Pat McAfee in the WWE? Dwight Howard made an appearance at this weekend's tryout, cutting promos and telling uh, Arash Markazi, that he wanted to join WWE at some point, even asking WWE coaches and tryout attendees how to take bumps and perform moves. Uh, he had like cameras following him all over the place, so who knows if this yeah. is going to be like some sort of Peacock special or just something who knows? for his YouTube. I don't know. He's a hell of a personality, that Dwight Howard. You got that right. He is. He so, really is. And he's a heck of an athlete, too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. he's, been, he's been in the NBA for a very long time. Um, I don't know how old he is. Because he came, you know, into the NBA straight out of high school. My guess is 39. 36. Oh, wow. God damn. Yeah. Um, I feel like know, he's been around forever. I know. I think he was drafted in 2004. So he's been in the NBA for, this will be his 18th season, I guess. And Mr. Dope saying, I'll assume 36. He's cheating. He just heard you say that. <laughs> <laughs> Banned. <laughs> um, uh, so, as you mentioned, Huge personality, as you saw, as we saw in these promos. We'll link to uh, to him here in the description of the video. Uh, he's got the personality. Mm-hmm, yeah. um, he's a hell of an athlete. Yeah. Um, I, even still, after eight, 18 years in the NBA, um, it's whether if he's serious about it, if he could take to the training. I'd be interested to see it because one one thing you know for the longest time you'd have celebrities and, and athletes get into the wrestling ring and it's and and it's it's you could tell they weren't taking it seriously within the last i don't know 10 years that's changed a bunch mm-hmm. we've seen celebrities athletes with little to no wrestling experience get in the ring and deliver really entertaining matches yeah um and usually it's, it's a, a one-off maybe two or three matches i don't know if we've seen anybody who was a high level all star level athlete or major celebrity say I'm dedicating my life to this and then do it and be exceptional at it. Mm-hmm. Um, whether Dwight could do that or not, I don't know, but I'm interested in seeing. Yeah, I don't really care. So um, Tim Preston brings up Kurt Angle. Thank you, Kurt Angle. Yeah, it doesn't do anything for me. I think it's great. I think I think you know if, if he has some goofy stuff on a Raw or something like that, then that's fine. But like, I don't know. I'm I'm. <laughs> I'm not just me personally, and I, I think it's great if if you do. That's awesome. Um, to see if somebody can do it mm-hmm. doesn't really appeal to me. I want to see the best people doing it do it really well on my TV because that to me is compelling, and I want to see the stories. Anything else to me is a bit of a distraction and kind of a bathroom break. If they're going to have like a face off with another, what? But you're like Logan Paul's number one fan of WWE. No, I'm not. I don't know where you get that from. Where do you get that from? <laughs> Stop saying you that. You I just think, said, you've, no, no, you look. said that you find him entertaining when he's on the TV screen, and I'm just teasing you about it. Yeah, no, I know. I know. Um, yeah, th- there, there's a difference. Even Logan Paul, I don't... Once he gets there and he starts talking, I'm like, okay, this isn't shit. It's, and, and, and sometimes I'm relatively entertained by it because he is a natural entertainer. Um, but, like, I don't know. I just, I just don't... I saw Dwight Howard's. Pro- it's funny because anybody who says D's nuts is funny, but like I don't really care to see if somebody can do something. That's cool. You could do it. Awesome. I, I just I don't. It doesn't appeal to me. But uh, I don't know if he's living out some sort of you know dream or whatever. Good for him. <laughs> I don't really care. <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. Do it in AEW or something. I don't know. If he could do a Spanish fly, White Brownie says you would pop for Dwight Howard if you do it, if he does a Spanish fly from top rope. That's my caveat. All right. All if right. he could do a Spanish fly from the top rope, I'm all in. Him and there a moss get up there, do a Spanish. I'll be. There oh, we fuck. go. That's cool. Then you, then you'll go buy Dwight Howard's uh, WWE t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? All right. You that's know. the deal then. 
But you know, Shake that's that's cool. <laughs> there, done. Done. Done deal. I'll be his number one fan. He'll number replace fan. Logan Paul. There I'm look, go. man, I just I'm Cody's number one fan, okay? I claim that title. I'm Cody's number one fan, not Logan Fine. Paul. Did Get you, out of here with that. Then put his shirt on. You have a shirt, right? I don't, know, I don't even know where it is at this point. <gasps> I wore it like twice. It's it's such a it's such a dog shit material and cut. <laughs> it's just not it's just not a comfortable shirt. I could be you know I could be Cody. I could be your number one fan. But if you're if the material is dog shit, I'm not gonna wear that. WWE. Their shirts are their shirts. It's funny. Oh, they're it's off. funny because like have like some of them are good. Like you and I have both had decent fitting shirts before. Like your champ one. Didn't you like your champ one? Yeah, the Champa one, uh, the material was fine, but that was when they were doing the the soft the, stuff, huh? Well, that, but also they were just doing the digital printing. Mm -hmm, yeah, and like the, the shirt was decent quality, but the print was awful. Mm -hmm, yeah, it wasn't vivid. It didn't pop. It was all washed out. No good. Yeah, yeah. So. I'm trying. I'm trying to envision a scenario in which I would care about Dwight Howard being in the in the WWE. Like if he was cutting a promo and it's kind of funny, and Roman came out and started talking shit to him, that I, I, I'd be interested to see how like Dwight Howard would respond. Like if if they could tell a cool story with him, yeah, then, then maybe I, then maybe I'd be like, okay, yeah. well I'm, I'm interested. In it. I won't turn if, it off. If they could tell a cool story, if if he's decent on the mic and and and, and fun in the ring, then I'd be interested. Everything's different now with Triple H. You know, yeah. like I'm I I'll have more of an open mind. I think right now with Triple H. I think things are going to change quite a bit, but I guess we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Anyways, talk about a change. This is interesting. So Stardom announced yesterday that New Japan Professional Wrestling and Stardom have created the IWGP Women's Championship. This new title will be defended in Japan as well as New Japan events in the United States. The first IWGP Women's Champion will be crowned at a New Japan X Stardom Joint Show happening on November 20th. This new title won't replace either of Stardom's top two titles, the World of Stardom and Wonder of Stardom, but will be defended at New Japan events and possibly at major Stardom shows. So there's always been sort of a debate, sort of a cultural debate, um, given that uh, in in Japan, professional wrestling, uh, the, like New Japan obviously doesn't have a women's division. There are separate women's promotions there, and Stardom's mm -hmm. like the biggest one. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I, I've heard arguments on, on both sides of like, oh, they should have a women's division and, and, you know, the other side, which is, you know, that's their business. Let them do what they're going to do. If it's, if it's accepted culturally and, and from a business standpoint that, uh, that new Japan, that they do it that way, then, you know, who am I to butt my head in there and say, oh, they shouldn't be doing it. They should be doing it our way. Um, but this is an interesting way to sort of. I guess I don't know. What do you like? It, it, it obviously New Japan is is interested in breaking in, breaking out really here in in you know the United States in North America. Um, and I wonder if this is a way to sort of say, hey, this is how you do it over here, where you have women's divisions within you know your your wrestling promotions, um, and and so we're gonna do that to appeal to that idea is is that where you sort of see this coming from uh, i could see i could see that that perspective um you know since new japan and stardom are owned by the same parent company bushi road it makes sense for bushi road to take their two wrestling properties and try to do crossover we've seen stardom matches uh happen at uh, i think the last two or three wrestle kingdoms um, and to expand that crossover by having a joint title just makes a ton of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Um, you know, uh, especially an effort to help. I know Stardom's been doing uh, great shows. They got a lot of great buzz going about them. Um, you know, now's a great time to capitalize on that and try to build up the, the company even more mm -hmm. um, and doing some crossover stuff with New Japan, having matches uh, here in the States to uh, broaden the audience for stardom mm -hmm. i think it's a fantastic yeah. idea yeah no i don't absolutely think, yeah. fantastic idea. There, yeah. yeah there's no downside to this whatsoever um it you know just more buzz to add to a thing because this has been this has been sort of a topic of discussion for quite a while now i mean dating back at least to like 2017 when new japan really started to break out here um mm -hmm. with the okada omega stuff um 
So yeah, that'll that'll be pretty interesting to see where that goes. And uh, and yeah, maybe it'll sort of kick our ass into gear in terms of watching uh, stardom, something that you, know, I know. you and I have both been really interested in. Yeah, really need to start Not watching. Really sort of drop the ball on it. All the all all the all the uh, word of mouth is fantastic. Yeah, right. All the gifts I see on on Twitter look really cool. Mm. So it's definitely something you need to need to get on. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, let's talk about Impact Wrestling Road to Emergence. Are we even going to cover that? I know it's not part of predictions, but our, I mean, there's no pay per views in August except for Emergence. That's the only one, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's the only one. WB has no pay per views, dude. I'm, yeah, month. let's do let's do a fucking uh, watch along. All right, August twelfth, I think it is. It's that weekend, I think. I think yeah. it's August twelfth. Um, yeah, I don't see any reason. Can we have? Can we? I don't know what to. to put on the line. Obviously, it's not going to be involved in August predictions. We already made that decision. Yeah. Right. But is there something we could do to up the ante a little bit? Oh man, I don't know. We can think about something, sure. You right. know, you know, yay! You know, what we should do. Let's figure out a way to do like a oh, like a. Oh, I'm just throwing this out there. It's probably a terrible idea. It's probably too too expansive. But do like I don't know a whole friendo thing, mm. like a friendo predictions thing. I was thinking like if you if you get most of your picks right for emergence you get to change like one of your g1 picks or something i don't know <clears throat> um we'll think about it. we got we got th- what two weeks three weeks to think about it so yeah, there you go uh so anyways i mean it's emergence i'm not sure like how many like the title clearly isn't going to change hands i think oh, it's going to be know. a really good match though alex shelley yeah. and uh so yeah, yeah we be fantastic did you watch impact last week because last week no. we didn't do the thing because no. uh, all the vince stuff was happening yeah, um, and I was out of town. And you're, yeah, yeah you no, decided to go on vacation. You were like, "Oh, Vince is retiring. I'm out of here. Let's pack the bags." I oh, know my, my my scheduling of that vacation <laughs> that weekend was in direct response to <laughs> it was. He's, I don't want to deal with this shit. I'm out of here. Retiring. Yeah, exactly. This is too huge of a story for me to to cover. I'm going to leave. <laughs> he couldn't act the pressure. <laughs> no. Oh gosh. Oh man, can too we, huge a story. Can we please talk about uh Honor No More trying to cut the feed and not even really being successful at that? <laughs> I, I listen. Yeah. We've been pretty upfront. We're not huge on Honor No More. I've never wanted them to lose a match more than I wanted to lose an emergency so they they have to break up and we don't have to see them anymore. <laughs> oh, but here's the thing. We will see them. They just won't be concentrated in single segments. <laughs> I know, and that's the problem, is 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 I feel like Individually, like individually, I like Ed, Ed Edwards fine. I think Mike Bennett is great. I like Kenny King. I, I like PCO does crazy stuff. I like um, Bennett and Canellis, and I like P, uh, I like PCO. Yeah, the other guys can kick rocks. Um, <laughs> like Vincent, whatever Taven, we've made it clear what we think about him. Yeah. Um, but I, I'd much rather deal. Here's another thing too. Together, they're going to be on the show every week. Individually. Yeah. No, they won't be on the show every week. Yeah, right. They'll be right. On, on the show here. They have a match here or there, a segment here or there. Only outside of Ed Edwards, mm-hmm. no one else is guaranteed TV time. I feel yeah. like Ed Edwards is like the impact guy. There. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, oh, as man. long as they're together, like this thing with Bullet Club has been. This has been going on for months, oh, and yet dude. nothing has been resolved. Nothing. I was so, I was so lost when <clears throat> Demore was like, "You want a title shot? You got to earn a title shot." I'm like. How many times this motherfucker told John or no more they got to earn a title shot? I mean, they pinned the, they they beat the Good Brothers. Yeah, right. Like how man? How many times they got to do this I know. stuff? I know. Um, oh, Brittany here says in chat. She says August twelfth is the start of my birthday weekend. Let's party, friendos. We should put something up. We should have the mods included for uh, emergence uh, uh, predictions. All right, that All right. would be fun. And that just put fun. something silly up. I don't know. I got that impact title back there. We should put that on the line. Um, it'll be our, our, our annual mod, uh, predictions thing, uh, emergence, <laughs> B level pay-per-view anyways. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, the Shelly Matt, the, the Shelly, uh, Alexander match is going to be really good. Oh, Boy, yeah. Alexander sure took care of share this week, didn't he? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That was quick. That was a three minute match. I timed it. It was yeah, a three was minute really match. Quick. And I love the finish. How like Shara hits him a couple times, and Josh just grabs his leg and flips him over and taps him out like it was nothing. He did I not know. even try to hit that reversal button. No, no, no. And then afterwards, uh, 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 Raj Singh was complaining about it. I'm like, mm-hmm. what did Josh Alexander did cheat? <laughs> he just grabbed his leg and tapped yeah. your bitch ass out. 
<laughs> like, what, are you, what are you talking about here? Oh man. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I don't know. Uh, I, I mean, a couple. I mean, things... like the opening bout was good, and they gave it plenty of time. That was a fun match. Yeah. Um, the the main like... event was good. Kushida. It was. It was. It was yeah. his. Uh, it was his uh, impact impact in-ring debut. Debut. Yeah. yeah, that was cool. Um, I like that they had some OVW talent. That was neat. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, come in, and then we saw Killer Kelly. That's right. Show up. Just and fucking it, everybody up. How do we not awesome. lead with this? So there's this really good Alex Shelley video package where they got people talking, oh, putting yeah. over Sorry, Alex right. Shelley. And amongst the people in this video package was John mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Gargano putting over Alex Shelley. And, 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 and it was essentially a Matt Chat question. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I think Fightful Select had that this was just a favor. Mm-hmm. No yeah. indication that Johnny Wrestling is going to become Johnny uh, Impact Wrestling. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't, I don't know offhand, you know, the history between Gargano and Shelley. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing given that they've both been wrestling for a very long time. Yeah, right. That they probably had several matches against one another. Um, and they might be friends. So it would make perfect sense why Gargano would be like, yeah, sure, I'll do this. Maybe Can we, if Alex yeah. Shelley asked him to, he's like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll send a video in. I'm sort of curious as to, like, does Johnny Gargano – it, it, it does he going through some some shit like did he break his phone that 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 oh, video yeah. was maybe the pixelated. the most pixelated so you know you know when you shoot something Mid-aughts. on your iPhone <laughs> and then you text it to somebody and it shows up really small really small so maybe they downloaded that and blew it up yeah i think uh, yeah i think i think he took the vi- i think number 1 he like threw his video on the floor his phone on the floor several times picked it up Took a video like with the selfie video Washed side of things in the washing machine. He took the actual fit, like the digital ones and zeros of that video, and then he he tossed them in the toilet. Took the took the video back out. All those ones and zeros. <laughs> that was the most dog shit. Like like, dude, these phones are insane these days. They really are. These things can do amazing things. <laughs> <laughs> the video. Why is it Johnny Gargano, who's got a Twitch channel which looks just fine, by I'm the way? I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, man. He he did it. He texted it to Alex Shelley, probably. It was green text too. It wasn't a blue text. <laughs> and then it showed up all small and compressed. Yeah. And then they just they just got it off Shelley's phone. Oh my goodness! And that's what we got. <laughs> yeah, that was horrible. That was horrible. But yeah, it was fun to see uh, Gargano there. It was like, oh, mm-hmm. NXT star Johnny Gargano or former whatever. Um, <laughs> former and probably future. Yeah, yeah. SummerSlam star Johnny Gargano. Uh, so uh, let's just go ahead and dive into it. First up, we had Ed Edwards. Yeah. yeah. Versus Ace Austin, Bullet Club's own, even though uh, Kenny King and Chris Bay both got involved to various degrees of distraction. Ed Edwards wins with a diehard driver. It, the uh, After the ref tossed both Chris Bay and Kenny King. Mm-hmm. Is like Kenny King still like they just didn't didn't just leave. Kenny King got back up with the apron so Ace Austin could kick him, and then Chris Bay gets to the ring to hit a tope mm-hmm. on Kenny King, and then they're just like still there ringside for what seems like forever, and then until uh, Chris Bay finally starts moving backstage. Mm, yeah, they, it yeah. was like the slowest process I've ever seen to anybody get kicked out of ringside <laughs> to make their way backstage. There is no sense of urgency. None. For them to leave ringside, None. Uh, and honestly, I'm not sure what the consequences are for that. Like, if a ref says leave and they don't, like, are there any consequences happens. for that? I guess it not. doesn't seem like it. it doesn't no, seem like nobody's it. ever stuck around to find out. I guess no. Uh, uh, then we had a Heath interview. He's he's talking about uh, fighting with Honor Nomura again forever. He says he tried to do the things right way with them, but they fight dirty and play nasty. They took out Rhino. Um, so if Honor Nomura wants to do this with no honor. Then he'll hit them all with a wake-up call. This is how far Honor No More is in the pecking order. They have Heath as the Honor No More hunter. And he is, in terms of faction hunters, he's probably the most successful we've seen in the modern era. Mm -hmm. You think of, like, uh, who is it? Yoshitatsu was Bullet Club hunter. Not effective at all. No. Uh, uh, We've had other... Frank Kazarian, elite hunter. Oh, terrible at it. Just terrible at it. Riddle was bloodline hunter terrible at it well i mean as long as he could wrestle the usos one-on-one he was fine yeah that's a good point that's a good point tag match is another story yeah. match against rome another story yeah uh after that we had a josh alexander interview 
talking about Harry Shaw share is going to be a challenge. Boy, he was wrong about that. Yeah, it didn't turn out that way, no. So Alex Shelley comes in very diplomatically, says, hey, man, we both know what makes best pro wrestler. And Josh Alexander says, yes, skill. And Shelley says, yeah, that's what I meant. Skill and technique at emergence. He says, uh, uh, Josh has me maybe the most skilled uh, with the best technique. I want you coming out of your match tonight unscathed so you can face the best at emergence. Josh Alexander was like, okay, cool. I'll finish that match in three minutes then. <laughs> yes, here, set your timer. Beat the clock challenge, essentially. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, um, yeah. Then we had Laredo Kid and Trey Miguel teaming up to take on Johnny Swinger and Zicky Dice. So uh, early in the match, Swinger and Dice got some mass on. What kind of masks were they, Larson? They were sex dungeon masks. Yeah, yeah. more or less. They were, God it, damn it, it. It, it. It had a bit of a demolition vibe to it. But yeah, the, that was the idea. You know, Swinger's dungeon and all. Uh, Laredo Kid uh, ends up pinning Zicky after a frog splash. They tried to use some like uh, 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 sadomasochist. Uh, type apparel to do some mm. twin magic. <laughs> yeah. And commentary yeah. was hilarious on this, by the way. Yeah, they were like, funny. do they think they look the same? <laughs> uh, so after that, uh, Gujar, Bupinder Gujar runs into Brian Myers backstage. Of course, Bupinder still wants a shot of that digital media title, and mm -hmm. Myers is ducking him. He says, you know, if I yelled, if anybody in the locker room wants a title shot and somebody answered, he says, sorry, you weren't there, man. He's like, I don't, Gujar's like, I don't buy it. He says, who accepted your challenge? And then crazy Steve and Taruz steps in, and Taruz wants the title shot. And Meyer says, well, I don't make the matches around here. Scott Demore does. And then Scott walks through and says, oh, yeah, okay, match happens next week. Uh, after that, we had an OVW spotlight match. Tiffany uh, Nieves versus Jada Stone. And Tasha Steeles comes down on commentary because she's sort of scouting right now. She's sort of like yeah. really potentially recruiting. Was she on the show last week? I didn't watch. I don't think I watched last oh, all week. right. Because I, I, I was trying to think if she'd been on TV since her match against uh, Jordan Grace. Yeah, right. Were we worried about her getting hurt? Oh, yeah. No, she seems fine. Um, yeah, she seems fine. Yeah. I didn't, I, don't know if this, I didn't know if this is her first appearance on TV since then or if she, she had been on uh, before this. Yeah, no. I think I because I knew going into last week that you weren't going to bring it. We were not going to be doing a Friday show. Mm-hmm. And then, like, everything happened. <laughs> yeah. And so, but no, in the meantime, I did not. I did gotcha. not watch. So, anyways, uh, uh, Nieves hits a DDT, rolls up stone, and holds on to the ropes to get the win. Then Killer Kelly comes out, just starts annihilating everybody, hits a big Steve Thunder pump kick uh, on Nieves, uh, chokes her out, and then hits a corner drop kick on Stone, who's the good guy here. So, like, mm -hmm. you know, she doesn't give a shit. Uh, mm -hmm. And then hits her with the fairy tale ending. So, it was... Awesome to see Killer Kelly make her debut here. So I think she's gonna she's gonna do some cool stuff in Impact, man. And that's yeah, the, I think so. Honestly, man, that's such a great place for women's wrestling. God mm -hmm. damn, the way they're able to fit so many different storylines in their knockouts division, it really is. It's it's so much fun to watch. It really is. It really is. Uh, next, we got a violent by design promo bit backstage. They're sitting in a stairwell, uh, and Eric Young is lecturing Diener about losing last week. Oh my God! Wait, Larson. When we referenced the Gargano stuff, did we say, John? Yeah. Oh, we I did? did? I did, yeah. Oh, man. John! John! Why? Well, I, I forgot to do it. Um, so then Diener is like, okay, I'll take out Kushida. Eric Young says no. First, you take out the Motor City Machine Guns, then Kushida. This was framed weird because they're, it's, it's Eric Young looking, not in the camera, but forward. Yeah, camera is, yeah, directly. Yeah, and then you got Diener looking to the side. Yeah, right. And I was like, well, this is strange. What, how is this conversation happening? And then they, they kind of pan out for Eric Young and Diener sitting to his left mm -hmm. on some stairs on a stairwell. And then Eric Young finally turns in his direction. Um, so it was just interesting that they didn't establish the geography at first for whatever reason. I guess they, maybe they wanted to make it purposely disorienting. I don't know. I believe it was done by design. Oh, there you go. I think it was no. I think it was because like it was yeah. It was very disorienting. Like, where are these? Yeah. What are these guys talking about? Yeah, no, it was good. It was by design. I designed by it. By design. I'm the director by design. Uh, I am the auteur, the provocateur. <laughs> see, it all comes together, man. It all comes together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so to speak. Uh, after that, we had Alex Shelley video package. This is where John was. John. 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 Yeah, uh, and then uh, we had this is by the way this is a really good video package. They had Jimmy Jacobs it in it also, a mm -hmm. couple others. Mm -hmm. 
after that, we had Shara versus Josh Alexander. All three minutes, Shara taps to ankle lock. Yeah. Uh, after that Moose interview, he's asked about his alliance with him and Macklin. And he's like, no, there's no alliance here. He's like, I don't know why Macklin was my locker room. I wasn't even in the building at the time. He's like, if anybody should be pissed at Macklin, it's good old Moose here because he made my victory over Sammy Callahan look like I needed assistance, but I didn't. And yep. then, uh, so, yeah, he says, me and Macklin, not a thing. Stop trying to make it a thing, Gia. Yep. Uh, then we get Honor No More backstage. Ed Edwards, yeah, yeah. talking about how Impact is trying to screw them over again. Heath attacks them. Scott Demore does nothing about it. Bennett and Taven, they earn themselves a tactile shot, yet they have to face Chris Bay and Ace Austin instead. They say, let's go talk to Scott Demore. So they go walking up that stairwell. Um, Scott Demore's office is a door out of stairwell. Um, so they walk up to him. <laughs> I'm so glad you noticed that, too. Yeah. They're yeah. in a stairwell, and then he goes into his office, which is just the floor that leads from yeah, that because stairwell. because there's a sign next to that door that says Scott Demore's office. Yeah. But it's just the, the – anyway. So, I was say, uh, the Sweets is rating is, what's up, Sweets? Oh, awesome. We're Thank talking about some rate. impact wrestling. Join us. Um, so Scott Demore tells Honor Demore that, uh, well, you know, Heath – that's a YP, not an MP. That's mm-hmm. your problem. Your problem. Um, and then Taven starts complaining about how they want a title shot and, and how they deserve one. And Scott Demore's like, oh, I keep hearing this word from you. Deserve. And so it's just Taven, it's Ed Edwards, and it's Vincent. Yeah, right. In front of Demore's office. And then they hear a commotion down the hall. Well, then Taven and Vincent leave to go check it out. Um, uh, and then we find out, I guess, what was going on later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so then we had uh, Chelsea uh, uh, and Dion, uh, Chelsea Green and Deanna Prasso backstage, and they're talking about Deanna's upcoming bachelorette party. Now, so I guess we missed a pretty big beat here from last week because Havoc, and we sort of it was hinted at the mm-hmm. week before mm-hmm. when we did watch mm-hmm. in the in the the dead zone or wherever they were. Yeah, she yeah. apparently has become happy person, yeah. and so now she's Jessica Havoc. And now she's like, you know, like a normal, she's not like, oh, brooding monster anymore. Now she's like chill. She's chill havoc is what she is. She's chill havoc. So she's the life of the party is what she's talking about. And then Rosemary and Taya come in and she's like, hey, what's your deal? She's like, oh, yeah, we're planning this party. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to make bottomless mimosas. And Taya marks out over that. And then Rosemary's like, hey, listen, let's get back on track here. We're defending our tag titles. Uh, against uh, against uh, Chelsea and uh, no, is it against Chelsea and Deanna? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's why they're mad. Um, and he said we're, we're defending our titles against them. We're not going to party with them. So let's yeah. go. So they go, and then yeah. Jessica is like, "Hey, this is my. This is how you put my name on the invite with a C and a K because I'm sick." Yeah, it was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, no, this is good, man. This I like that they're. I I love that that Impact does that kind of stuff, man. It's like goofy, but it's a lot of fun. Everybody's in on it. I like that stuff. Exactly. Uh, then we get the uh, uh, Raj Singh promo. Shira is still selling the effects of that ankle lock on the floor. And he's talking about how Josh Alexander cheated, should have been DQ'd. Uh, Shira should have been credited with the victory in the record books. And he says, I'm not leaving until there's some justice. Lights come down. They come up. Sammy Callahan's in the ring. He hits Singh with the pile driver, grabs the mic. He says, I heard what you had to say earlier, Moose. I don't care if you and Macklin are working together. You both have a date with Death Machine. Thumbs up, thumbs down. With the Death Machine! Serenity now! Uh, after that, we had uh, a little... So the, one of the advertisements, or one of the advertisers on this week's Impact was uh, Jim Crockett Promotions. Mm-hmm. Uh, because they got that Ric Flair's last match coming up. And so uh, they did like an Impact you know, uh, moment of the week, flashback yeah. of the week, in coordination with that. And of course, it was when Jay Lethal, who... I forgot his Ric Flair impression is insane. It's so it's good. So good. I know. I know. God damn. It's so good. Yeah. So it was their it was their woo off. It was their woo off. A classic moment in TNA history. Really? Yeah. Really. It just it really had been a while. Like I'd seen I'd seen the woo off plenty of times. It had been a while since I'd seen his Ric Flair impression. So obviously mm-hmm. it comes with it feels like I'm late to this. But oh my god, it is really good. Even it's so good. Even like Flair's reaction to it, he's like, Oh my god, this guy sounds exactly like me. It's really good. Uh, mirror, mirror, a, on the wall. We get a Mia Yim interview. Um, she says she came to Impact to prove that she could still with, go with the best. She had, uh, she respects Jordan, but at emergence, uh, she says uh, uh, Grace will find out why they call me the HBIC and the new knockouts champion. And then there's technical difficulties. Cameras glitching up. Audio drops out. So it ends the interview. They go to commentary. 
They start talking. Same thing happens there. We cut uh, out by the production truck. Scott Demore is like running <laughs> to production truck, and there's Otto Demore just kind of like banging on stuff a little. Well, bit. okay, there is. <laughs> They are the majority of them are banging on stuff, but I think like Vincent and, and maybe it was King, I forget. There's like a little circuit breaker box, yeah, 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 and there's like wires that have been ripped out, of yeah. It. So there's like they're like mice just sort of chewing at wires now, exactly, exactly. So Scott Demore says, That's it, this time you've gone too far. Broadcast partner's gonna be upset because their feet had been cut, and then Bennett says. Well, that's how it always is. It's always our fault. We haven't gotten the tag title shot. It is your fault. You're literally literally out there chewing on wires, man. I know. I know. So then Scott DeMore says at Emergence, you'll earn your opportunity. You get a match against Bullet Club again. (laughs) Again, another match. And if you win, then you'll get your tag title shot. But if you lose... Then they got to break up. Yeah, no he more talks about no how he was put through the same thing back in the day. So, so that's Team a Canada, deal. Yeah, and so they're they're upset about that. Uh, I, I love in your notes here. It says Scott Demore runs to production truck. Honor no more fucking with shit. Because <laughs> that's what they were doing. They had that they're circuit breaker. banging on stuff, <laughs> pulling wires out. Oh man, it's funny too because as soon as he gets there, like go to commercial. But I watched it on yeah. YouTube, so it came immediately. There was no back. commercial. I know. Same. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Anyway, but the fifteen people who actually have access and watch it on there. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know, man. You want I don't know more to lose this so that uh, they get disbanded. I don't know. Uh-huh. It's such a source of comedy for us, though. It. I, I would be legitimately sad. It's such a source of comedy for us. And Vincent be. never. He never like said. Oh, by the way, yeah, I was at I was at the Ring of Honor show. So I'm only part time on or no more. I wish they would have well, referenced this, that. Well, this was shot probably before. I don't know. This might have been yeah, shot but, before Tony Khan bought uh, bought Ring of Honor. I don't know. <laughs> You're probably right, but they're usually really good at like inserting that kind of stuff and 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 taking footage from three months ago that they shot and making <laughs> it feel like it was shot this week. They're usually really good about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I don't tell you, man. Uh, then we had our main event: uh, Rich Swan versus Kushida. Really fun bout. Uh, Kushida gets the win, hoverboard lock. Um, yeah, really fun, really fun. Man, I might get some Del Taco today. I'm looking at my Twitter feed. There's like just Del, Del Taco tweeted something out. That sounds good. I just had a salad before we started, so uh, we had some. Which means NXT. I'm gonna be hungry by the time we're done. Exactly, man. Del Taco uh, NXT UK this week uh, happened with man a hell of a main event. Hell of a main event. Our friend Wolfgang taking on Ilya Dragunov, destroying that dude's back. This was like when Batman fought Bane, man. Yeah. This dude analogy. was tearing him to shreds. And, I, and by the end, I was like, how is this guy possibly going to lose this match? Wolfgang is absolutely dominating this guy. Um, and so we're sort of curious. So I guess we shouldn't probably talk spoilers for stuff that's coming up, huh? I guess not because it actually hasn't been set until it happens on the show itself. I yeah, guess we, 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 we won't it. talk about that. Uh, so yeah, uh, kicked off. Go out, your, go out of your way to watch that main event. That was fantastic. Oh my god, yeah, it was. It was probably. I mean, I can't think right now, but like, I don't know, match of the week maybe. I'm for for. I'm trying good to think thing. of anything else that was any good this way. I mean, there was some good stuff on Raw. Um, there was a couple of good matches on Dynamite, but yeah, yeah. What happened? Yeah, what was on Dynamite? What was like the big um, match? Like Roosh and Mox was really good. That Is was, really was Death match. Before Dishonor considered this week? That was on Saturday, so no. So no, not technically, huh? Because that had some match of the years on it. That Roosh, that as as good as the Briscoes was. That that Roosh match with uh, Dragon Lee was just fucking awesome. But no, this was a terrific match. It was really good. You guys should check it out. Oh, Garcia and Danielson was good. Yeah, that was a good match. That was a good match. Had a goofy ending, but that was a good match. Um, Wild Boar and Mark Andrews trying their hand to taking those NXT UK tag titles, bringing them back to the UK from Briggs and Jensen. Uh, but unfortunately, this thrown together tag team just that doesn't make a lick of sense at all mm-hmm. in any sense of the word. Mm-hmm. Mark Andrews should be trying to get that heritage cup, man. Could you imagine some Mark Andrews heritage cup? Those would be some fucking good matches. I know, especially him against Dar would have been really good. Oh my god, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, anyways, Wild Boar and Mark Andrews came uh, short, uh, came up short 
Andrews misses a shooting star press. Briggs and Jensen hits their finish for the win. Still NXT UK champions, Briggs and Jensen. Yep. Uh, then we get Tyler Bate backstage. He's like going through. Uh, he, he's feel, He's full of angst, it seems like. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then he sees a cameraman. He walks over. Not very he zen. Grabs he grabs, grabs a camera, uh, like holds on to it and says, I got a message for you, Trent. You broke my heart. I loved you like a brother, but now I'm coming for you. Oh, now I'm coming for you, mate. Oh, yeah. yeah. This this next bit, I really like this. So we get a press conference with Mako and Saray. Yeah, that's good. And so they talk a little bit. Uh, like Saray says, that I'm I'm the sunrise. You're the sunset. And then and then Sid says, all right, uh, press, here's your opportunity to take pictures. And so they're both, you know, posing. And then Mako's just glaring at Saray. Yeah. And Saray sees that and is like, oh. Mm. Yeah, oh, I don't know what mm. to do here. Yeah. That's going to be a fucking hell of a match right it there, is. man. It I'm really is. so looking forward to that match. That's going to be really good. Uh, we also had a really good match with Amel versus Blair Davenport. Of course, Blair Davenport saying she's going to crush the hope in NXT UK. And Amel's like, wait, I'm the French hope. Are you talking about me? Then match happens. Yeah. Uh, and, and then the she end. wins. Yeah, Blair then, wins. Yeah, and then Blair wins. Yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was a good match, though. It was good. It was really good. What did you think about this, man? So uh, we had a, a video package where Oliver Carter had broken into D Familia's dining area and he left a note saying uh, Raja is next on his list of D Familia victims. Yeah. And the implication was also he left an upper decker. Yeah. You know, that's what I gathered from this. Mm hmm. So it, well, he left more than just a note. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he left some poop. He was fucking yeah. with their dining ware. He should have yeah, left no. some food. They would not have known what to do. Like, <laughs> how did this food get at our dining table? There's never been food here before. <laughs> like, we never put food on our plates. How did this guy get in here and put some food? Uh, what does it say? Fish and chipsy. What's that all about? <laughs> Oi. <laughs> uh, after that. So, oh, this was great. <laughs> the, it's East End Bookie. Poor Shaw Samuels. He just wants some peace and quiet. People just keep on coming up to him. And, and, and this dude comes up to him and wants to pay out their bet, you know? And yeah. uh, he's like, he can't. So, unfortunately, he's like, what are you going to do? Hey, take my shoes. So, he's, he's got his Air Maxes on. So, he has to give up his Air Max, and he's not content with that. He's like, hey, take my socks, too. It's unknown if that dude actually took his socks because they cut. Later on, he's trying to get some sleep. Josh Morell shows up to collect. And Shaw has to give him his jacket. And then later on, he's got to give well, up another jacket. And then there's another jacket on underneath of it. So. Yeah. <laughs> so he's got to give that one up and a hat. And uh, he says, I lost all my money. Dawes lost the cup. And he's upset with me. He's like, I've got nothing. And then somebody comes by to collect again. And he gives him his last jacket. I think I did watch UK last week, though. Mm. And one of the guys that came to collect was Johnny Saint. And it was actually pretty funny because <laughs> Saint was funny. rocking some great sideburns too. I wow. guess he, yeah, he's he's been spending his time growing out his sideburns. Wow, um, he thinks but it's seventies again, huh? The great part about this though is that in the end, when Shaw Samuels, you know, he does a thing where he he, he screams. They totally used a Wilhelm scream. Mm -hmm. It was not him screaming because I've I've heard that scream before, and it's hilarious. That's funny. Yeah, That's super funny. Uh, we get a quick little bit. Chase U is coming to NXT UK next week. That'll be a lot of fun. And then we got our main event, Wolfgang versus Ilya. And yeah, early on, Ilya tries to pick up Wolfgang. His back gives out. Uh, and then, of course, Wolfgang just starts working that. Um, uh, eventually, though, Ilya hits a senton off the top rope. He's writhing in pain because back. Oh, yeah. He's looking for his finish. Instead, he runs into a clothesline. Wolfgang hits like a suplex into a cutter type deal. It's awesome. Get to two. So the Wolfgang goes up top. Uh, Ilya hits him with some strikes. Wolfgang headbutts him to the mat. And he's looking for, if I guess, a buckshot lariat or some variation thereof. Mm -hmm. Instead, he just leaps over the top rope right into a knee. Mm -hmm. uh, Ilya picks him up, slams him, and then falls with a torpedo to get the win. I wonder if he was trying to go for like a like a, a buckshot spear type thing. You know? That'd be cool. Flips over and goes he's got the best spear in the business. He's got a terrific spear, but... Just came up short. Just came up short, man. Oh, I God. Know. This was so good, though. It was such a fun match. Um, so before good. we move on to our SmackDown preview, let's uh, recap night seven of the G1. Enforcer, Not a good night for Steve and I. Leaving us in the dust. Truly. Is. Leaving us in the dust, man. Which is what I I think we both expected. So uh, four matches on the night. Bad Luck Fale defeated Yano. We got that one wrong. Uh, Hiroki Goto. Enforcer got all these right. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Hiroki Goto defeated Aaron Hanare. We got that one right, Steve. Yeah. 
Tomohiro Ishii defeated Tamatanga. We got that one wrong. Will Ospreay defeated uh, Yujiro Takahashi. We got that one right. Mm -hmm. uh, Kurt scores. Enforcer has 36 points. Mm -hmm. Steve and I both have 30. Big dummies. A lot of yeah. G1 left, but yeah. August uh, for uh, the Big Red predictions, looking pretty good right now for the Enforcer. For the Enforcer, I know. I mean, point values change substantially once we get to the semifinals and finals, so... Yeah. One of if, if if enforcer has a lead, but his picks don't make it to the semis or the finals, then that huge lead is ultimately for not. Kind of so. bummed about that. I wish we had just made everything two points. Well, I had suggested rather doing five and ten, we do four and eight for that reason. Yeah, I'd like so to, do, I, dude. I'm, I'll be honest. I'm pulling for enforcer. This is this should be his thing. You know, it really should be. It really should. It really be should his be. Thing. Let's 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 make an executive decision here. Two out of three votes says we lower those points. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we got SmackDown tonight. Hey, oh, we're going to be doing a live SmackDown watch along. We're not going to be doing GTA today. Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing a live SmackDown watch along here on the Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Steven Larson from 5 to 7. No recap afterwards because I like my Friday nights. Uh, Drew McIntyre is going to battle Sheamus in a high stakes Irish Donnybrook match. I think it's like an anything goes type situation. Yeah, the winner faces Roman at Clash at the Castle. Mm hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, the New Day are going to throw down against the new and vicious Viking Raiders. Again, it's going to be kind of interesting to see what changes are made yeah. to all this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Aaliyah is going to take on... This is going to be really interesting to see if they continue this stuff with Lacey Evans, to see if they're going to try to alter direction, if they're going to drop it after SummerSlam, um, or uh, you know what they're going to do with Lacey Evans, because it's mm -hmm. been... It's been up and down, to say the least. Oh, yes. To say the least, yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, I guess we can take a couple questions here. I have a questions thread up on the YouTube. So we can do that. We can do that. Next, Mitch. Uh, come on, your channel, community. There we go. There we go. Uh, Jason Lewis, how do you think the SummerSlam card would look uh, if Vince had retired after WrestleMania? Good Lord, I don't know. Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns or something like that? Maybe? At the top? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I suspect even they understand that Becky versus Bianca for SummerSlam is a lock. That's like the that, match that needed to happen. Yeah. That would have been a lock regardless, yeah. But uh, beyond that, it is so hard to tell. I'd be kind of shocked if they didn't try to shoehorn knock. I know they still probably want to do shorter pay-per-views. That's going to be kind of an interesting thing. Yeah. If they're going to want to continue to do shorter pay-per-views. I mean, there's usually the, the major ones, the four major ones, they try to pack. Um, and there's only eight matches for SummerSlam yeah. tomorrow announced. I mean, yeah. and even if Seth ends up getting a match, I mean, nine, mm -hmm. which, what, there's... How many were on SummerSlam card last year? Let me check that real quick. They should do, they should do Nakamura and Gunther for the IC title. That that should be sort of I know one of the top priorities bringing that IC title back up to prominence. Yep, because it's been so last year. There's eleven matches. Okay, on the card. How many were those in the kickoff? Does it say just one? Really? Mm -hmm. So ten matches on the actual card. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, Wrestle King. Do you think Paul Heyman will replace Bruce Pritchard as number two in creative? There is word that Paul Heyman is in the inner circle there. Yeah. Um. So wouldn't shock me if if he was Triple H's wise man. Yeah. In creative. Apparently he was at the uh, tryouts this weekend too. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Him, Big E. Yeah. Uh, Mayor Planet Houston. How important is it for Liv Morgan to beat Ronda Rousey at SummerSlam? And do you think they'll actually get uh, give it to her? Liv at least seems like she's willing to do all the events and autograph signings and talk show appearances as champion. I mean, this after what happened last year with Nikki Ash, similar situation where she cashed in one May of the Bank, not the night of the show, but uh, the night after on Raw, and then dropped the title back to Charlotte at SummerSlam, and. They had an interesting story they could have told with Nikki. The gimmick was money. She could be a huge star right now if they had told that story correctly. Instead, they went for the, 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 the quick pop of ratings and then put the belt right back on Charlotte. If they do that again, it's going to be a massive bummer. I think if they want to really establish Liv as a main eventer, as champion, then she's got to win this match clean. 
clean. And if she doesn't, then it's it's like, okay, say she wins, but with help somehow. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, she's still champion, but mm-hmm. you know, there's always going to be a butt attached to it. If mm-hmm. she loses, then it's like, okay, well, here's another instance where they put the belt on someone to try to get a quick pop, but they had no vision for it. Yeah. Now, you'd like to hope now that Triple H is in charge, there's purpose beyond just a, a, a pop for making moves, mm-hmm. title changes. There's mm-hmm. a story involved. So hopefully there's a story involved, and, and Liv will, will win at SummerSlam, and, and they'll continue to build her as, as a main eventer. I agree. Carlos Diaz, under WWE's new vision, will there be a new – Lol blank wins in the likes of John Cena and Roman oh. Reigns. What a great question. I mean, look, there's always going to be. I could see. I could see Lol Braun wins. There's when, really when Braun Breaker finally comes up. Yeah, under the, they're, under they're triple like, under Triple H's vision. I mean, based on how they see, like the the booking of him now in NXT is like, hey, he's learning how to wrestle. Mm-hmm. But when it comes down to it, like he can basically uh, uh, beat anybody. Mm-hmm. So yeah, can, right. Yeah, yeah. Unlike a, a fair one-on-one bout, no one can beat him. Yeah. Um, it's the inexperience he has to get past, and once he has the experience, then basically no one's gonna be able to beat him. Period. Mm-hmm. So by the time he gets to the main roster, the idea is maybe there'll be a little bit of growing paint up the main roster. But once he finish finishes the learning process, but once he gets to that, I mean that's the story. Is he's basically unstoppable. I think uh, that's an interesting point. I'm, I'm I'm curious to see if Triple H is going to take that same view on Braun that uh, that Vince and Bruce seemingly did. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, apparently HBK likes him too. I would think. Um, I think it's I think it's probably going to. I could see it being Bianca. Bianca might be the next. Lol, Bianca wins. You know, because I don't know if they're going to want to turn her heel anytime soon. Mm-hmm. And even if they do, I think it's going to be a really strong heel. Um, I, I I could see it being Bianca. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here. Oh, Nikhil, what would be the most embarrassing way theory can possibly fail as cash in? He craps his pants. Mm-hmm. I mean, you want know, most poops embarrassing. He full soil. Himself. Full a full soil. Yeah. <laughs> Deep load. Yeah. <laughs> Deep load and a full soil. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, this is a great question because it's so accurate. Several people ask this. Brandon Collins has the most honest way of asking it. Using your criminally small knowledge of stardom, who yeah. is your pick to be the first IWGP Women's Champion other than Kyrie? Because she's probably the only one you guys actually know. Uh, <laughs> that I, dude uh, just roasted us. <laughs> uh, Mayu Iwatami. Uh, I don't know who's Thekla. champion now. Thekla. Thekla. Starlight Kid. Yeah. Um, uh, Julia. Yeah. Trying to think of other stardom wrestlers, I I, I know. Yeah, of. just uh, just throw out other names. Just throw out other names. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know of those wrestlers who's champion currently. So, Starlight Kids still have a belt. Yes. So uh, let's see if the names we've mentioned, any of them have titles. So Mayu Iwatani does not have a title. I don't think does Julia. Julia does not have a title. So I'd, I'd, uh, one of them would be my pick. Stardom needs to bring in Lulu Pencil and have her be the first mm. IWGP mm. Uh, champion from uh, Choco Pro. I don't even know if she's still doing stuff. Um, uh, we get this question a lot. A lot. Magic Eye says, with new management, do you see WWE working with other promotions? No. I do I that there might be that that might be a battle fought between the McMahon Helmsley faction and Nick Khan. Mm-hmm. I could see Nick Khan possibly thinking, no, we're billions of dollar value. You know, our market cap is like five, six billion or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should not be consorting with other promotions. Triple H on the other end, maybe he'd find value in it. I mean, it's a possibility. Wasn't, wasn't he, was, he the one that yeah. told? That told Luke Harper when he was unhappy that we'll we'll get you to New Japan or something like that. Rocky Romero was talking about having a conversation with, with Nick WWE, Khan, yeah. and that sort of like fell apart. But he's hopeful that it's a possibility. So I I don't know. I think it's I think it's a possibility, but I I wouldn't I wouldn't bet any money on it for sure. No. 
No. Um, this is a great. We'll end on this one. This is a really good one. Um, well, we got a couple good ones here. Big Bopper says the Big Bopper says uh, who had the highest ceiling, but due to politics, never got a chance and was just jobbed out. To, one of the names on my list is Damian Sandow. I don't know. I I can just assume yeah. it was politics or Vince just didn't like him. I thought that dude had such a high ceiling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a good answer. Um, Darius Corey, if anyone, uh, who should Triple H call back into the fray? Who left too soon? He says, in other words, who left too soon? Well, Gargano's got to be up there. Oh, yeah. John. Oh, yeah. Hey, John, listen. Get back over here. Come on. Big plans for you. It'll be interesting to see if Triple H brings in any of his people in NXT that were let go. Mm Mm-hmm. Um... You know, that, that was more so on the creative side of things, so. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see what you're saying, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a possibility. So, I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Uh, don't know about that one. Don't really want to deal with that one. Uh, oh, this is a good question. Mitsubishi says, why do you think British wrestling fan channels have the YouTube wrestling game held down? Because they're awesome. Because Wrestle Talk is great and Cultaholic's great. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, because they're all flipping great, man. That's why. Mm-hmm. That's why. Anyways, we love those guys. Yes, um, anyways, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. Hopefully, you'll hang out with us on Twitch for not only SmackDown tonight, but SummerSlam tomorrow. Until next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Stone Cold Steve Austin impersonator Phil McDonald here to tell you to go support Going In Raw and Friendo Club at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. They got bonus episodes, ad-free audio, a weekly newsletter rounding up the week in wrestling news, and a bunch more. Patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Go support or get hit with a stunner.